can you tell me a little about it as far as what what we found as far as the different types of ADHD? Do we see different brainwave patterns for say someone with more of the hyperactivity versus a more inattentive person? Do we see significant EEG changes? Yes, we do. The, the individuals that are purely inattentive, and then let's say a child or an adolescent, they just sort of lay around all the time and they play video games and they can't focus and they, on anything else. Unless it's really, if it's very interesting, they can do it. That's why they can play video games very well. Hmm. But when they're in, the, they're in the classroom and the teacher is lecturing or they have to do workbook problems, they quickly kind of zone out. They just can't keep with it. And they produce a lot of these big slow waves. <laughs> I remember once an incident, this is a long time ago, the teacher was looking at this child and the child looked that way and the teacher said to the child, do you have any idea what I've been lecturing on for the last half hour? And the child turned around to the teacher and said, no, but I just had a great trip to Aruba. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a great example because this is what they do. They daydream and they fantasize and they're in their own little world and they're having a wonderful time, but they're not able to concentrate on anything or very few things that they don't understand why it's important. Why do I have to learn long division? It's boring. I don't really care. You know? uh, or why do I have to read this, this dull story that was written 200 years ago? Uh, but if you give them a computer game, they're really good at it. And usually better than people who don't have this problem. So in other words, they can focus when they have to. Now, the inattentive types show this big slow wave pattern. Some of the hyperactive children show a combination of the slow wave pattern and Occasionally, they produce bursts of very fast waves in certain parts of their brain. And then there are individuals that have a combination of uh, attention deficit disorder with hyperactivity, and they also have conduct disorder or oppositional defiant disorder. They get all kinds of trouble in school. Uh, and, uh, oh, can you turn this up? and they get sent to the principal's office a lot. And uh, these individuals, have bursts of this high frequency activity intermixed with the slow activity. And then when we get into adulthood, uh, a lot of the adults, instead of producing these big slow waves that are called theta waves, between four and eight waves a second, they tend to produce the normal alpha rhythm, which is eight to 12 waves a second, but it moves into the wrong part of their, of their brain. Instead of being in the back of their brain where it's supposed to be, especially when their eyes are closed, it moves up to the front of their brain. And so they have this frontal alpha rhythm. <clears throat> and they also complain that I can't concentrate, I can't finish my task. Interesting. So the frontal alpha is something we see more as children kind of transition into adults with ADHD? <clears throat> yeah, adolescents and adults, yes. Okay. So adolescents, it, is there like the theta dominance or the, the theta to beta ratio that I've seen kind of being too high with, with adolescents. Is that, does that change as far as when you move to adulthood? Yeah, actually the, I developed the theta beta ratio back in the 1980s as an observation. I never meant it to be a diagnostic. It really is not a diagnostic. It's just that a lot of individuals, <clears throat> excuse me, especially with the inattentive type, have a high theta beta ratio. But as they move into adulthood, they tend to have more alpha compared with theta. So it, it just changes its frequency, but the pattern of slowing is still there. <laughs> you just can't help yourself, can you?